Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and staying at your homes. So today we are talking about India. I'm Jasneet and I'm from Punjab, which is in the northern part of India. And that's why we are called Punjabis. Uh, what I love about being from Punjab is the warmth of the people around, their kind and jovial nature. Yeah, they're always very welcoming. And on top of that, their love for food. Every Punjabi just loves food. <laughs> so I have so many favorites, but if I have to choose just one, that would be Puri Bhaji, which I am having right now. Ta-da! So this is Puri. It is made out of wheat. And this is Bhaji. It is actually a potato curry. So yeah, it's really delicious. You should definitely try it. To further, Punjab, or I could say actually India, is a multicultural land. So we have a lot of different cultures, different religions and festivals. So I belong to Sikhism. So my religion is Sikhism and we are called Sikhs. This was founded by Shri Guru Nanak Dev Ji. And the belief of uh, this religion is humanity. You guys might have read about the six serving nature in times of need all around the world. Even in Dubai, we have a Sikh temple. Guru Nan uh, the name of the temple is Guru Nanak Darbar. Hope you guys would love to visit Punjab someday. Take care. Good luck. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. I went to India. Um, and I remember a baby elephant in the back of a truck, cashew nut trees with strange looking fruit. I remember colorful fishing boats on the beach and collecting starfish and hermit crabs. I remember bright woven fabrics for saris. Um, I loved going for rides in the streets in a tuk-tuk a funny little three-wheeled car. I loved putting straws in coconuts and drinking out the sweet coconut milk inside. I loved eating food off banana leaf plates. Um, I loved looking at all the brightly colored woven baskets. I especially loved eating fried bananas with sugar and coconut. Um, I loved India. Here are some photos from Miss Robin's trip to India. Hi, grade threes. Um, it's nice to be here today. I want to uh, share with you my little visit to India because I hear you guys are learning about India. Um, I was there over winter break and we tra I traveled with a friend of mine who uh, lives in Canada. So we were able to compare UAE, Canada and India during our visit. Um, the, uh, we landed in the city of Delhi, which is the capital or New Delhi, it's also called. It is very big. It's the second biggest um, city in the entire world with 28 million people. Um, I think Abu Dhabi has about 1.4 million. It would take 20 um, Abu Dhabis to make one New Delhi. Imagine 20 Abu Dhabis to make one New Delhi. There are many big cities in uh, India, but there are also, uh, because it's so large, there's also other spaces. There are beaches if you're interested in um, that kind of experience. There are jungles that you can actually uh, trek and see their, their tigers. There are high mountains that if you were interested in trekking and hiking. There are river and waterways that you can enjoy water activities. There are forests. There are, there's agricultural land where um, there is a lot of canola grown, which is the oil that probably many of your families use for cooking that is grown out in India lots and lots to do. In the time we were there, we weren't able to do all of those, but we did get a feel of um, the country uh, nonetheless. One of the things that stood out is the number of cultural differences that they experience in India. Uh, for example, their food, um, there is lots of similarities, um, but one of the things that I enjoyed was a simple bread there that it's called roti, and maybe some of you have had it. Um, it is a kind of a bread dough, 
um, that is uh, pressed and cooked against the hot side of a cauldron. And we experienced seeing that in Goa. And hopefully that you'll um, see that too with a video I sent to Miss Von Dushka. Um, the other things that are different there are um, that you'll see elephants in traffic, not in every place, more the tourist places, and they're not used for transportation except for people that are tourists. And they don't transport goods, transport goods on them uh, anymore. Uh, we experience the arts in terms of their musical instruments. Yes, they've got drums. Yes, they've got types of horns, but, and yes, they have singing. But the sounds are very different than what we would experience in either Canada or the UAE, and hopefully you'll see some of that. We also got the uh, chance to learn block printing, and block printing is how they produce much of their fabric. If you know Miss Dilpreet uh, from school, she has an Indian background, she's of an Indian background, and she has um, many outfits that have block prints on them. So hopefully you'll see some of that. We actually got to make an elephant block print while we were there. Uh, the other thing is marigolds, and those are flowers about the size of a button. Uh, you will see marigolds absolutely everywhere because they are strung in either garlands or necklaces um, or in um, uh, little bouquets, but they are used for um, to honor their gods and they bring them to temple. They lay them on people's graves to honor the um, deceased. They also use them as a um, way of sort of spiritual protection and you'll see them hanging on the rearview mirror of cars on bicycles, on rickshaws, on tuk-tuks, which is like a little uh, three-wheeled truck, on the doorways of um, stores and mar uh, market kiosks, and people's homes, and so that those that enter under the garland are seen to be protected. Um, the other thing that stands out is that was very different was the way they did laundry. And this was a really unique experience to me. I I'm guessing that many of you have um, seen laundry being done at home with machines, or perhaps it's sent out and somebody else does it by a dry cleaner or a laundry service, um, or at a laundromat in some places. Um, but in the city of Mumbai, they have a community laundry. And when I say community, I mean 7,000 people that live and work in one area where they do laundry. They do the city's laundry in Mumbai, again, is millions of people. So they do the city's laundry for the hotels, the hospitals, uh, the military, uh, uniforms for other areas, perhaps in universities, some of the public laundry for the people, but most of it is on, big, on a big scale. So you will see lines and lines of drying laundry in um, Mumbai at the community laundry. You'll see people beating the laundry to get it clean. You'll see people folding laundry. Everyone in that 7,000 person community has a role to do laundry every single day for the city of Mumbai. The standout actually f for my visit um, to India is one that you're probably familiar with and that's the Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal is in the city of Agra and it is uh, one of the seven wonders of the world and that's a very prestigious um, position to be to hold because it has tremendous history. It is a very large building made mostly of marble um, that was built by a Shah about not quite 500 years ago. He was madly in love with one of his wives and she died quite suddenly. And to honor her, he decided that he would build this Taj Mahal. They call it the Taj for short. Um, and in so doing, he had to enlist 20,000 or more people to build it. It took 22 years to build. And so they, they, the materials that they build it, built it with, it doesn't come from just Agra. It comes from the regions all around, all around India, Nepal, um, China, uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and it wasn't transported like we would normally transport things, maybe in large trucks or by ships. They didn't have those uh, luxuries. They used 11,000 elephants over those 22 years to build the Taj Mahal. Um, you'll notice the top of the Taj Mahal has a dome. They refer to that as the Onion Dome, and you can have a look and to see why it's called the Onion Dome. Um, on that note, I understand that there is a hotel in Dubai that has tried to imitate some of what the Taj Mahal looks like. It's a pretty good rendition apparently, but not exact. You will, it won't have the precious jewels or the precious metals that they use in, um, they used in uh, 
the Taj Mahal in Agra, but it, it does give you a sense of what the, uh, the, grand, the grandness of uh, that building. So if you're ever in Dubai and you don't go to India, you might want to have a look at um, a visit to the Taj Hotel in Dubai. You are going to learn way more than I, what, what I was able to share here with you. Please um, hang in there and enjoy your learning with your teachers. I'm looking forward to hearing from them and about your experience about learning uh, about India. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Good to talk to you. Bye-bye. Here are some photographs and video clips from Miss Pia's recent trip to India. So this I will drive for you. When you leave this place, you can have this video. Okay, this is present for you. Thank you. Thank you. Ajay, okay. okay. Just plain water. Now inside, I will show you things for the first Hey, grade three. It's Miss Jamie here. I uh, just wanted to send a little video to talk about uh, two of my trips to India. I was very fortunate to have um, two vacations there. They were quite short, but they were amazing. My first trip to India, I went to the Golden Triangle, which is three different areas in India. The first was Delhi, which is the capital of India. I think currently there's roughly 19 million people that live there. Um, and my favorite thing about Delhi was just the hustle and bustle. There were so many people there. Uh, we took a rickshaw tour, which is when you sit in a chair with wheels and then someone um, controls the handles and they drive you around uh, while you're sitting in the chair. Um, we took one of those tours through one of the really old bazaars. So if you don't know what a bazaar is, it's kind of like um, a really busy shopping area with lots of stores, um, lots of trinkets, lots of clothing, um, food. It was really, really amazing. Uh, after Delhi, we went to a place called Egra, and this is where we went to see the famous Taj Mahal which was a monument that was built um, out of love. Um, I can read you here. The construction of the Taj Mahal began um, after the emperor, uh, Shah Jahan's wife, died in childbirth. So the emperor's wife uh, unfortunately passed away and he built the Taj Mahal uh, as a memorial for her. So it's a beautiful monument um, out of love. 
That was one of my favorite monuments to see. And then we went to a place called Jaipur, which is famous because of many reasons. Um, it's also uh, known because everything there is pink. So when you go into the city, all the buildings are beautiful terracotta pink. Um, we also went to uh, a bunch of places to see them make famous um, Indian carpets and rugs that are usually made out of wool and silks. And they're very, very beautiful. Um, it's a very good way for them to make money is to sell those, make and sell those rugs. They're hand woven. And then the last thing we did was take an elephant ride up to see uh, the fort that's very famous there called the Amber Fort. So that was a really, really fun trip. Uh, my second trip I went to an area called Goa. I believe Miss Vendushka has also been there, so she can tell you a little bit more about that. But we really enjoyed the beaches of Goa and all of the food. So I also just wanted to share with you a few of the things that I loved uh, about India. Um, the first was that the women wore these beautiful saris. I'm going to see if I can show you a picture of a sari here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but the woman there in the purple um, is wearing a sari and I just thought the women there looked so beautiful in these saris. Uh, another thing that I loved about it was the rugs, as I told you before. So that's a picture there of an example of a massive area rug. This would probably cover your whole room in your front living room. And one of the other things I loved about India was the food. I don't know if you can see that there, if there's a bad glare, but that is butter chicken. So the food there was delicious. Uh, they don't eat cows because cows there are holy, um, they're very um, sacred, uh, so maybe perhaps that's where the term holy cow came from, I don't know. Um, but all the food there that I ate was chicken, so my, fam my favorite was butter chicken. Um, really delicious tomato sauce with chicken and rice and this bread called naan bread, which was just so delicious. And the last thing that I loved, this is one that I bought for my sister, is a singing bowl. Um, so usually if you go like this, after a while it'll start singing, but I'm going to make it go faster here for you. Oh no, I can't do it now. Oh, I'm really bad. Okay, well I can't get it to work for you today, but normally this does sing. Um, it's just really hard to, ke to keep it going. But if any of you have a singing bowl, uh, maybe you could show a video of it from home and give it into your class. Okay, well enjoy the video. Um, good luck learning about India and um, hope you enjoyed the video. Good to see you guys. Bye. I think it's because I was holding it. So there's one of the singing bowl. A lot of yogis, so people who study yoga and practice yoga, um, do a lot of sound meditation. So this is also um, used a lot uh, in India. So enjoy and good luck with your e-learning. Bye. Good morning, grade threes. Madame Emmeline here. The first time I went to India was on a weekend vacation um, back in October. I loved India so much, I went back again about two months later and I spent three whole weeks there. I love India so much and I want to go again and again and again. A couple of my favorite things about India, uh, number one, I definitely have to say the food. I cannot tell you how much I ate when I was in India. Everything was so delicious and spicy and comforting and it was just so delicious. I enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, what else I like about I India? I loved the people in India that I met so much. I found everybody to be so friendly and warm and helpful 
and I would often have people start conversations with me and we would just chat even if I didn't know them at all. And I thought that was really fun and so awesome to be able to get to know a lot of people that I wouldn't normally get to know. Now, I could go on for so long about all that I love about India, but I think my time is up. But if you ever have the chance to go visit, definitely take it. Bye guys. Hey grade three, I just wanted to tell you about a little time that I was living in India. I was there for three years and I lived on the side of a mountain, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute. But first I want to talk to you about, I'm going to talk to you about four things actually. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the clothing that we were wearing while we were there. So one thing that I wore all the time was called a salwar kameez and that's a long shirt this and it, it goes down to my knees and with some pants underneath that were kind of like really big and baggy and something that uh, you wear with all your shirts all your um, salwar kameez suits is something called a dupatta and a dupatta is just a long scarf and you wear it around your neck like this but you don't tie it on you just leave it loose like that I like to wear mine like this um, but lots of people wear it down a little bit like this and this is called a dupatta and every Friday at the school that I was at, we used to have sari Fridays. And so every Friday, all the ladies, we'd wear a sari. And that's the, the sort of um, outfit where it wraps, it's meters and meters of material and you wrap it and you fold it a special way at your stomach and you wrap it around and you throw it over your shoulder. So we loved wearing saris. So those are the kinds of clothes we wear. And uh, the food that we ate while we were living there, we actually had um, some similar things to here. We used to have chicken biryani all the time. We would also eat um, lots of rice and dal, which is a lentil. And uh, the dal was in sort of like a tomatoey kind of sauce, or um, sometimes it was a creamy sauce. And then we'd put that over the rice and we'd eat that with some fresh cucumbers and radishes and whatever was available, tomatoes, that sort of thing, carrots. And uh, we also had something called aloo gobi, and aloo is potato, and gobi is um, cauliflower. So they would cook that together. That was really nice and spicy. And uh, one thing I thought you might find interesting is that milk in India is called, or in North India anyway, is called dude. So we uh, you know, ate a lot of the same kind of things that we eat while we're here. But no shawarma. Too sad. One thing about the food, though, is that it was so spicy. Like, burn my mouth spicy. So I always had to have what we called dahi. That was a yogurt, similar to here. And I would pour that all over my food. And that would kind of calm the spice down for me. I had a really hard time with all the spice. And I wanted to talk to you about the language that we spoke while we were there. And we spoke Hindi. And in Hindi, to say hello, put our hands together, and we say namaste. And whenever we were talking to somebody who was uh, like an older kind of person or anybody who was um, like a, a teacher or a, sh a shop owner or anything, we would call them G, which is like sir. So I would say namaste G. And, uh, and then if you wanted to ask them, how are you? You'd say, apkesehe. Um, and to answer, if you're saying I'm fine, you would say aptike. So that was kind of fun. And uh, I'll just count for you up to 10. It's ek, do, teen, char, panch, che, sat, at, no, das. And that's in Hindi. Now, this is the language that they speak in North India. In South India, they speak, uh, well, in it, all over India, there's hundreds of languages, but the very common language in North India is Hindi. And so um, when we were living there, we were living in a province, I guess you'd call it, or um, like an emirate, called Uttar Pradesh. And while we were there, it changed to be Uttarakhand. And we were very close to the Nepal and Tibet border up in the mountains. And so uh, like we were way in the mountains, like 6,000 feet up in the air. And every day we would have to climb the mountain a thousand feet because we lived at the bottom of the school campus. And um, we had to climb a thousand feet just to get up to school. So you never wanted to leave or forget anything at home because it was a heck of a climb. So climb up, go to school, 
and climb back down again. And there were, you could drive a car, but it was very, very dangerous because the roads were very, very tiny. So most people had scooters, but we didn't have a scooter. So we had to walk everywhere we went. So every day, hiking up the mountain. And I had my three little kids there with me and they were even younger than you are. So it was quite, uh, quite an adventure for us every day. And uh, while we're doing this hike, we would be hiking with the monkeys. And there were two different kinds of monkeys there. There were rhesus monkeys. They were really mean and you had to stay way away from them. So um, every day, they would try and walk with us and they would like kind of walk along the fence, the top of the fence and try and come. And if, if we didn't, you know, make lots of noise or anything, they, they would probably jump on us. And if they do that, then you have to go and get a needle because, uh, they, those monkeys carry rabies. So every day we'd have to kind of fend off the monkeys. And so we would always pick up some rocks or rock walk with some rocks in our hands so that we would, we wouldn't throw them at the monkey, but we would throw them kind of, towards the monkey and then they would get scared and go away. So they always had guards posted all over on this walk who would have slingshots and they would slingshot towards the monkeys to kind of keep them away from us. And the second kind of monkey that we had was um, called a langur and they're actually bigger than your dad. So they were really big monkeys, but they were way more shy and they didn't really come all that close to us. But I want to tell you a story about a monkey that came to visit us at our house one day. And uh, we, I think we were upstairs. We weren't in the room that he came in, but um, we didn't have screens or anything on our windows. And so he climbed in our window and went to the fridge, took an apple off the top of the fridge and then went right back out the window again. So. I'm glad I wasn't in the room with them because they're huge and kind of scary. Um, and when our kids would be out on the on the deck in the yard, the monkeys, the littler monkeys would come and kind of steal their toys or steal their food. So it was an interesting time, a very interesting time. But it was beautiful because we were in the jungle and we had trees everywhere. And one of the years that we were there, we hiked all over the place. We hiked a thousand kilometers one year, just up and down in the mountains. It was absolutely beautiful because we lived, even though we were, you know, sort of at the bottom of our campus and we walked a thousand feet up to the top of the mountain or up to the campus that wasn't even the top of the mountain. We could also climb down the mountain beyond our house, which was, oh my gosh, we could walk for hours and still not get to the bottom. So, it was very, it was very interesting. Lots of exercise, lots of beautiful green trees and flowers and grasses and everything. It was very beautiful. We also had monsoon while we were there. And uh, every year for about four months, it just rained nonstop. So you had to have a nice raincoat and some rubber boots and uh, even going to school, pouring down the rain. It was quite a fun time and I really, really enjoyed living there. It was such a beautiful experience. So I hope someday that you will get to visit India too. Namaste Ji. So as Miss Jamie said, I also had the chance to visit Goa, which is a part of India too. I visited there in December and my favorite thing was looking at the amazing landscapes and the really interesting buildings that I had the privilege to see. So I visited some churches and temples. I also thought it was awesome when we were driving around to see cows walking in the middle of the street, crossing the road and the traffic stopping for them. This was my favorite dish when I visited Goa. It's called dosa and I absolutely loved my whole trip there. The experience was amazing and I cannot wait to return to this magical country.